Diversity and inclusion is one of our core values at RBC and uh, for decades we've had a real focus on the advancement of women and uh, I think the key goals that we have are around representation on our board so it starts at the top and we're very proud today to have our chair be a woman. It's about representation in executive ranks and uh, we are proud to also have made good progress there and we're at 39% of our executives. And then our senior leadership and, and leadership roles in general because still 62% of our population are women. So we have a, a real focus on um, uh, making sure that women feel they have the tools and, and support they need to advance in their careers. You know, I think when it comes to diversity and inclusion, and this doesn't just apply to women, I think it's absolutely critical that as a, a large service organization serving clients, that we represent those that we serve. And obviously with the population of business owners, the fastest growing segment of business owners is women. And so it would uh, be a smart, not just the right thing to do, but also a smart thing to do to be able to make sure that we represent the full spectrum of, of uh, you know, those that we represent in, in our ranks. Unconscious bias, I believe it has really been at the root of why women might not have moved ahead. People were thinking while well, they might not have been saying, well, they're in childbearing years, maybe they're going to take some time off. And uh, I think it's really important to get those kinds of things out on the table. And so what I believe unconscious bias has done and the discussion about unconscious bias that has started at the top. We have our Diversity Leadership Council chaired by our CEO, and these are the discussions that they have around that table where there's representation from all businesses, is to say, how do we make sure those issues get out on the table so that they're not unconscious and they're conscious? And if they're conscious, you can actually do something about them. I think my favorite group to talk to are young and emerging uh, leaders, particularly women, because I think that uh, I, I did a, an article this week about the confidence gap and I think often it holds us back as women. You know, there's studies that say that, you know, women wait till they can tick 100% of the boxes before they apply for a job where a man might only tick 50% and he'll go for it and he'll go for it hard. And so I think that women, young women in particular, need to have the confidence to know that they uh, will learn from every job and that they're not going to know everything when they go into new roles and it's important to take risks early in their career to learn as much as they possibly can across a wide spectrum of things so that then their toolkit is really well developed as they come to compete for more senior roles. So I think uh, the you know, key pieces of advice would be to you know, take, some, take some chances, um, develop a network of, of people that you trust that'll give you honest feedback about how you're doing.